Welcome to the Flex Rental Solutions How To Webinar. Today's topic is on the deposit invoice and the payment flow from a quote to an invoice or from an invoice to a quote and the ability to pass off an invoice with payments applied to the invoice. So I'm going to start out by doing some configurations and showing you where to set that up. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up a payment term with a deposit, a type of deposit. So if you go into your system settings and go down to your payment terms, you can add a new type of payment term simply by clicking on the new payment term. Now we have several in here already. Some people use the 50-50 or you can create your own by doing a 50% deposit with the balance net 10, net 30, whatever you want to configure. But once you create that and you save it, this now shows up in your payment terms inside the quote. You can also create a client and in the client terms, you can assign that payment term to the client. So whenever you do an order for a client, this standard term will populate simply by clicking on it and assigning it. Now, anytime you create a new payment term, you have to activate the terms in the accounting options. So you would go to your projects, your project elements, you would activate it in your quotes and your invoices. All your terms show up and unless you click the box to activate it, you cannot utilize it with the client or even in the quote. So you would do this both for the quote and the invoice. Now the deposit invoice, in order to utilize our new deposit invoice, you also have to activate the field settings. So again, you would go to projects, project elements, go into quotes, and field settings. We have the deposit field settings right here in the middle, and you just wanna mark them, yes, I wanna enable it. Yes, you want it to inherit from the parent document, Yes, you want to have the ability to override it. Yes, for the percentage. So this gives you the ability to uh, choose a percentage deposit rather than a dollar amount. And then you want also to have a due date if you want to utilize the due date. All of those need to be set to yes. Save your changes. And then we will go ahead and start a quote. As soon as you start your new quote, you'll notice down in the bottom, we can now see the deposit invoice configurations. This is where you can put in your percentage or your dollar amount, which will allow it to configure 50%, 20%, or maybe $200 in here. And when you print off your deposit invoice, it'll pre-calculate it. So I have one already started. We have one here that we have, well, I'll go ahead and start a new one. Let's do a new one here. So we'll create the new customer. Call this deposit invoice. Put in a client. And we will use the percentage 50%. Now, because we have the customer set up already to configure the payment term, we don't have to put a percentage in here. It'll automatically default for the customer. So I'm going to take that back out and I'm going to hit accept. And Betty has her 50% deposit balance due and I can always change it at any time. So now we're going to throw on some equipment here.
what this does is it pre-calculates the deposit amount from the total balance. So I can click on my deposit invoice and I can send this off to a customer without invoicing the job. So I can get a deposit to confirm the order. Here's our deposit invoice. It has the amount due. It has the breakdown of the 50%, shows the rental and when it's due. Now when the deposit comes in, we can generate a payment or we can go ahead and confirm it and then apply the payment. We'll enter a payment amount. Say it came in the mail. Or let's see. Let's put in there $590. Now, what it's going to show you is the deposit has been applied to the quote. And up here in the project tree, we now show the payment amount being applied to the quote. So all your payments now are going to show in the project tree. And what we're going to do now is we're going to export this payment over to QuickBooks. So you can either click on the payment or you can go up into your financials, receive payments. Export to QuickBooks. Go into our QuickBooks, run our web connector. And what this does is it takes the payment, sends it over before the invoice, and it keeps it inside the, uh, the income tracker where it's just showing it's in the unapplied payments. So this will sit until the invoice is generated and exported over to QuickBooks. So now I'll go back to the invoice or to the job. And what I want to do now is I want to apply, um, I want to create an invoice. So we'll flag this as ready to invoice. And then I'm going to generate the invoice and apply another payment to it. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see a payment that's applied on the invoice and it's going to generate the payment up to the quote. And you'll notice also the payment from the quote has moved downward to the invoice. So we have the ability now to have your payments flow upstream and downstream. So right now we're going to apply another payment onto this. And if I open up the quote, this should have $790 applied to the quote. And there's your payments. So we have the ability to flow your payments downstream, upstream, and it also keeps all the payments in order here. Now I want to go to the quote and I want to show you our update invoice feature. We've created this button down in the quote section that if an invoice has already been created and the salesperson makes changes on the quote, you can now update your invoice just like you can update your pull sheet after it's been generated. So we're going to add another item onto the order which will make the order 
at a higher number and we will update it by clicking on that update invoice. We've added $110. We go to the invoice. It doesn't automatically update. So unless you click that button, the items on the quote are not flowing downstream. So I'll go back to the quote, click update, and you'll see it on the invoice. Update invoice. Yes. Takes us back to the quote or to the invoice. And now you see the, the heater that was added onto the order. Now I want to flow the payment. Remember, we put an extra payment on here. So now I want to export the invoice and it's going to pick up that payment that's already been invoiced or excuse me already been exported over to QuickBooks but at the same time it is going to drag this second payment along with it so I'll be in the let's see I'll go to the invoice I'll click on export and then hit yes Go into my QuickBooks here, generate this, close this, and if you notice in your customer section of your QuickBooks, you pull up your invoices, and we have the all lighting invoice here that has the the pars, the lighting, the additional patio heaters, as well as all the payments that have been applied to it. So the features in Flex are the deposit invoice. You have the ability to print a deposit invoice without actually invoicing the quote, getting a deposit from the customer and confirming the order, and applying the payments, and then invoicing the quote, and watching the flow of the payments go from the invoice, from the quote to the invoice. And then the payment also follows suit with the invoice when it's exported. So that's, uh, that's the new features that we have coming out in our next build. If there's uh, any questions that you have regarding the, um, the webinar today, you can email support at flexrentalsolutions.com. Thanks and have a great day.